So there's this weird tech you can do where you jump, switch weapons, hold a charge attack, and jump again out of the charge attack, switch weapons, and then hold a charge attack and jump out of it again. It looks like this. And you can pretty much do it infinitely. I don't know that that has any real use, it's just something I saw. And I figured I'd share it with you guys. Okay, so weapon rarity increases your damage and your durability with the weapon. So the blue will hit for 90, okay, and then the gold will hit for 124. So it's pretty substantial on the damage difference. Well, it does 93 before it's broken. It now does 70 when I need to repair. That's 20 to 25% reduced damage. All the melee weapons take 2 seconds to repair, with the exception of the greatsword. The greatsword takes 3 seconds to repair. All the ranged weapons have slightly different repair times, and I'll list those now. Uh, starting with the fastest, the repeater crossbow takes 1.5 seconds. The pistol takes 1.75 seconds. Uh, the musket takes 2.25 seconds. The bow takes 2.5 seconds. The cannon takes 2.75 seconds. And the swarm, flamebringer, and blood ripper all take 3 seconds to repair. You also do slightly reduced damage when you attack from a sprint, even though it has the same animation. See, that did 88, whereas if I'm just moving or standing still in attack, it does the 93. So it's just a little bit of damage, but it's something to know. If you hit an enemy with your grapple, it'll stop them moving. So you can use that stun to set up a free ranged attack on an enemy. Make sure you're going up to the top right corner and checking your mail at the mail icon and claiming all your rewards, because they send newsletters and sometimes send you rewards in the mail that you can claim. If you don't know about this game's torchbearer system, it's Naraka's refer a friend. Your account will have a code right here, and you'll give your friend this account code whenever they are creating their account. If they've already made their account, it's too late to do torchbearer. So you'll get them to use your code whenever they make their account, and as they level up, you gain rewards. Like this banner background. When you've got more Tay than you know what to do with, one thing you can spend it on are these immortal treasures. It refreshes with four every week that you can buy for your Tay. The first one costs 4,000, the second one costs 6,000, the third one costs 8,000, and the fourth one costs 10,000. So 28,000 Tay a week gets you four immortal treasures. On top of that, you can hop over to the Silk Store and buy a fortune treasure a day. Uh, it's not very many, maybe like 10 or so. It ran out really fast for me, but it only does one a day. And then once you've reached the purchase limit, they don't refresh for you anymore. Shout out to Simon Gutierrez for commenting on my last video about the diminishing returns on stagger from the same move in a combo. Uh, this is known as toothpicking. Rest in peace slash dash. We'll miss you. This will allow you to guarantee three consecutive hits with a window for the opponent to act after the third hit, or two consecutive hits and no window for them to counter. So you really only want to do it once like this before you start your combo. Right. Another tip for success in the game is to maintain a healthy lifestyle outside of the game. I'm talking about your sleep schedule, your diet, your attitude. If you've ever played the game hungry, tired, or just with a bad mindset, you know that you do not play as good. And if you need to take a few minutes away from the game to take a little break, that's totally fine. Maybe you need to log off for the night. Whatever it is that keeps you having fun and happy on the game and in your physical body will keep your performance consistently high. Another quick shout out to Swizz, you commented on my Soul Jade video about Blue Moon and how you can spam it like this. <laughs> Wow. You could do vertical, you could do horizontal, you could just keep spamming it. That is actually really useful, and I did not include that in the video. So, uh, great job, Swizzy. If you're trying to level up quick, make sure you're doing your weekly quests, your daily and your weekly quests, but also your season quests. These will usually have you get a certain medal in a match, like this. Or have you use gold soul jades of different weapons to get the killing blow on enemies. You have to use the attack that comes with the gold soul jade. If you've watched my previous video, you know exactly how to utilize all of these soul jades to get the kill. When you first cultivate a hero and you get the new versions of their abilities, it shows these videos of how to use the abilities, but there's no way to get back to there from here. You have to go to the talent screen and down to the actual skills in the list and it'll show you the video again of how to use the skill. Make sure you're clipping your fights and you're watching them back, especially the ones where the dude whooped you so bad that you don't know what's going on. because you 
you can learn a lot from watching that bag and analyzing what was going on and what you could have done better and use that knowledge in your next fights. You can greet and receive greetings from your friends on your friends list. Greeting them builds your intimacy level and receiving greetings from them gives you Tay. You can greet and receive five times a day. Alright, so I'm on my phone here and I got the Naraka Plus mobile app, right? Um, you can go to uh, the stats section and it'll show you your win percentage, how many you know matches you played, and your uh, your match history. So you can like go into your match history. Um, the thing about this is like you can click on see like okay I got first place in Harold's trial right here right so we'll click on it and open it up. You can you can open up an interactive map and you can see where all you win all that good stuff. That's not what we're here for. What we're here for is party performance. So we're going to click on party performance and it's going to show you a list of player names right okay so here you can see the list of all the players that were in the game all the human players it only shows the list of all the human players so these five teams were the only teams of human players in this lobby the rest were bots so you can use that you can use the app to basically check how many bots were in your lobby Go back in your high kill wins and see how many bots were in your lobby. I'm sorry. So many bots. I just want to fight real people. And generally speaking, the game is pretty well balanced as far as the heroes and the weapons go. You can pretty much just play whoever you want with whatever weapon you want and you'll find success in the game if you continually do get better and you learn from your mistakes. Everybody just has a different play style and so you kind of just got to see who fits your play style. Another thing that helps is watching live streamers like uh, the one linked in the description below. If you pull up your map, you can see people on ballistas rotating and moving around. When you're looting, make sure you pay attention to the rooftops because purple items can definitely spawn on the rooftops. Okay, I'm gonna show you a basic air walk and I'm just gonna say the actions as I do them. If you don't already know this little trick, you're going to jump, attack, dash forward, jump, attack, dash forward, jump, attack, dash forward, jump, attack. And that's a way you can cover more ground from height and just make sure you can maintain better position. There's a lot of times when air walking is really useful. You see a lot of people do the air walk with a focus dash for some reason. So they'll dash to the side into a focus dash that they jump out of, like this. Dash to the side. It doesn't work if you dash forward, but it doesn't get you as far. It's kind of just preference and style, but I think the basic air walk is more practical in most uses. Oh, really quick, these bird nests. I don't know if you've ever seen them around, but uh, you can destroy them for loot. I want to show you one more cool thing with air walking if I could find a bow. Ah, uh, here's a bow. Okay, so... I want to show you the airwalk with the bow. Okay, so airwalking with the bow looks like this. Basically charge it and then you just jump out of it. Not very useful, but it's pretty funny. If you pick up a weapon with a skin already on it and you want to use your skin, there's a keybind for that and you can change the weapon skin from the one that you picked up to the one that you're currently using on your loadout. Fireflies have set spawns on the map. So if you can learn these and incorporate them into your drops or loot routes, then that'll really help you in the early game to get an advantage when nobody has their ult. But you do, because you got the fireflies. Every time you see a firefly, just remember that location. And I've showed you one here, so. A good way to gain advantage from neutral is to utilize the blue focus charge of a light attack. So if you just hold it a little bit, you get the blue focus armor for just a moment, and you still throw the first swing of your combo. You can use this to counter your opponent's first light attack because you'll soak theirs with the blue armor and then counter with one of your own, like this. You probably don't fight unarmed a lot, but I'm sure you know that unarmed cannot parry. I also want to show you unarmed can't be parried. Familiarize yourself with the smaller locations on the map and learn what different places are good for, like Artisan's Grove has these rooms full of breakables that you can use to gain a lot of money and heals really quickly. It's usually gonna be faster to loot from your inventory than it will be to try to pick up interact things on the ground. So if you're not already opening up your inventory to loot, pretty much just get in the habit of that. You wanna do it pretty much all the time. It's just faster and more efficient. A couple settings you need to adjust if you haven't already. We're gonna go into game settings. First off, let's turn off auto run. That was in one of my previous videos. It helps with short dashing to have it off. What we're here for is the ceiling interaction. We want to go ahead and turn it on. And what that's going to do is allow us to climb on the ceiling like this. You can't do this when your ceiling interaction is off. But this is game changing before you have it on. 
and for some reason by default it's off I'm not really sure why but go in your settings and turn that on and then over in our button layout we want to make sure we turn our sensitivity up default is something like 25 I play on 40 which is still kind of low but you want it just about as high as you can stand it being your aim sensitivity probably needs to come down from whatever it is. And on controller, things are a little different. You have more advanced options for controlling sensitivity. But we're not going to go into that today. I'm just telling you to, in general, increase your view sensitivity and decrease your aim sensitivity. You can drop coins from your inventory like this. Um, if you use your crouch key while you're grappling, it'll stop your grapple wherever you're at. But you don't have to jump to cancel your grapples. Um, using crouch gives you a little more control of your cancel and you can save that jump. This could be useful in a situation where like, you started grappling towards someone who started charging a blue attack and you don't want to lose your life. We've all had our weapon taken by Takeda. But if he doesn't have an open slot in his inventory, he won't be able to store the weapon that he takes from our hands. If this happens and he drops the weapon on the ground, we can pick it up immediately as he's flipping us over to drop us right on our- like this. So don't wait for the whole animation to pick your weapon back up. The soul count in the top left corner shows how many people are running around as a spirit. You can hear the footsteps and see the ripples of water from a person in spirit form as they're moving. If you come across some gold soul jades that you're not going to use, like these for katana, still pick them up for the 6% attack because the blue ones just give you 4% attack, the gray ones just give you 3 and you'll find these in the form of 9% melee defense, 18% HP, and stuff like that. So they'll always have bigger stats than gray and blue ones. When you kill somebody, you typically want to go for their soul bloom first, unless they have a shield that's bigger than yours. Just go for the soul bloom first, because you need the heal. You want to get as fast as you can picking up soul bloom, so that you can be comfortable doing it mid-fight as a quick heal. From the new update, players in solo get a rebirth now. So even in Herald's Trial, if you play solos, you get a rebirth now. So instead of just dying off spawn, now you can die off spawn twice. To make your scale rush a little faster than just running up the wall and climbing it like that, try sliding and jumping into the wall to initiate the wall climb, and it'll get you into your scale rush faster. You can see through walls by positioning your camera correctly. This can be utilized a lot of different ways in a lot of different situations. You can do a quick scale rush off of a wall, but not off of a tree. It just does a climbing attack. A charged focus attack coming right at you can be parried. You can ping stuff in your inventory and tell your team that you have one gray armor powder or ask for soul jades. Say a teammate pinged a soul jade and you don't know what kind of soul jade it is, it'll tell you in the chat on the side the name of the item that was pinged. When you're in a bush, you'll go invisible, right? But if you aim down the sights and the musket, you'll become visible until you stop aiming down the sights again. You'll also be revealed for repairing your weapon. But you won't be revealed for healing. Purple focus beats blue focus. So because of the way that the camera angle is set up in this game relative to your character, a lot of attacks come out on the left side of the screen. The left half. So imagine the screen was split vertically into two halves. Like when I do my uppercut, you can see that the attack is clearly on the left side of the screen. So if my opponent dodges to their left, my right, they're creating more distance from the attack that's coming out from that side. Whereas if they dodge to the right, they're kind of dodging into the attack. See that? It's like they have to go past it instead of just going completely away from it. If you look at the swipe from the spear uppercut, it comes out a lot more on the right side than other attacks do. So if somebody's playing spear, dodge to the right. If they're playing any other weapon, dodge to the left. There's these purple mushrooms that spit out poison if you attack them, and they do a lot of damage if you get poisoned. Yeah, that sucks, I almost died. But if you attack near these red mushrooms, they spit out a gas that increases your attack. Um, after the effect wears off though, you will still take poison, like from a purple mushroom. See that red mushroom poison? It doesn't do quite as much damage though. If you're on PC, you don't have to pull up your inventory to switch weapons. You can hold your weapon keybind and use your scroll wheel to switch weapons as well. That's a setting you can turn off in your controls if you don't want that. These lanterns in the environment can be shot down onto other players to stun and deal fire damage. So you know you can get out of Viper stun by breaking line of sight, but you can also just go invisible and she can't see you. 
so she can't stun you. And you get Backstabber! <clears throat> There's a lot of trove spawns across the map, but certain ones are more likely to be a higher rarity trove. So like this one is gold, it's usually gonna be gold or green for soul jades. Sometimes it'll be blue, but most of the time it'll be of the higher rarity. A lot of times the guaranteed higher chance spawn troves will be located in spots that make sense, <clears throat> like the center of this circle of stones. So typically in game, you want to prioritize maxing out your soul jade bag first to six slots, and then maxing out your item bag to full. I typically only expand my weapon bag to two slots in the beginning, so that I can have a melee weapon, a ranged weapon, a backup melee weapon, and an open slot. It's good to have an open slot so that if you parry somebody and they drop their weapon, you can pick it up and take it from them so if they're without a weapon. After you buy your expansions, if you're good on heals, start rolling on soul jades. I mean, don't roll on Soul Jades if you don't have any heals, but, you know, you get it. Don't be ridiculous. Familiarize yourself with the different sounds that are made as your character walks on different surfaces, like this. Knowing that sound once saved my life when I was inside the building, and I could hear that tile sound so I knew someone was on the roof. If you're having trouble hearing stuff, you can go to your settings and adjust your audio settings. You don't have to turn your background music off, off, but... Um, in game, the, the combat music is way too loud, and there's there's just no reason for it. A lot of times, like it'll just start playing like when you um, like when you rebirth yourself at a soul altar, it'll just start playing this intense music. No reason for all that. So I turn mine off. And with your sound effects too, like the bane breath is really loud. There's no reason for it to be as loud as it is. In game ambience, like I I don't need to hear all the birds chirping and the grasshoppers hopping on the grass. UI was a bit loud, but I, I want the characters' um, voice lines and the combat sounds to be as loud as possible so that those can be audio cues for me when I'm trying to read my opponent. Uh, this is a wishing well here. You can uh, drop items into it and it'll spit items out. The higher rarity item you drop in, the better chances for a higher rarity thing that it'll give you. And I mean, you can just put back in it whatever it gives you too. So that's pretty funny. I think it gives you three uses each time. Like we'll drop a purple in and just get another purple. And then it stops glowing and see it drains down. That means you can't use it anymore. The fruits stack with each other, but do not stack individually. So I can only benefit from one prickly pear at a time, but I can be under the effects of a prickly pear and a salak at the same time. If you see this guy bust his ultimate, you should probably just go up in a tree because there's not a lot he can do about it. And you can emote as a dead body. I want to show you real quick a combination of two soul jades that's really powerful in team modes. That's going to be advanced heal and group heal. Advanced heal makes your healing items do more and they take effect over time instead of being instant. Group heal makes it where when you heal yourself, you also heal your teammates regardless of how far away they are. Um, but it says the effects are slightly reduced. I don't have any footage of it here, but I've had these in game before. If you get both of these, so when you have both of these and you take a lot of damage and get out of the fight and go heal, your team can be overwhelmed and outnumbered and you can still just be sitting here healing them over time. It's it's really strong. I've, I've used it a couple of times. I'll try to get some footage of it sometime and show you how strong it is But if you ever come across these try to collect them and hope that you get the other one for your team Because you'll make them near unkillable because advanced heal heals over time instead of instantly You can pop more than two big heals in a row before you reach full and so your teammates will sit there and benefit from your overtime healing while they're still fighting It's really good. So try that out sometime. So I only use these ordeal coins on the gold challenges and only one specific gold challenge and that's deal 1000 damage with melee weapons if i don't get that i don't take it also you can re-roll these challenges with this little icon right here of course no thousand damage with melee weapons different characters ultimates will scale with different rarities of equipment that they can have for instance valda's ultimate says the attack of water spear scales with the rarity of her weapon though having a gray weapon and using valda's ult will do less damage than having a gold weapon and using Valda's ult. This is something your whole team needs to think about when they're coming across higher rarity weapons. You want to prioritize giving the higher rarity weapons to characters that benefit from it. Some characters also benefit from the armor rarity that they get. And in general, you probably want your support to have a good shield anyway. So these are just things to think about when your team is looting and upgrading. Your team should also be communicating effectively. That means not just calling when you see someone, but calling who you see and what color shield they have on. Call if they use their ult, or even just their active skill. And when you're being serious about communication in a fight, try to weed out unnecessary callouts. Effective team communication can take you a long way. 
you miss a grapple, it doesn't consume it. And finally, Big Tip 69 is all about the bone. This big bone right here. This beautiful, magical, giant bone here. But tip number 69 is to hide in the bone. When you're in trouble, just hide in the bone. Just jump in the bone. You can use the exploit of looking through the walls to see what's going on around the bone while still being safe in your bone. Thank you for watching, and let me know in the comments what you learned here. If you want more tips, guides, and discussions, make sure to subscribe for notifications on future content, and I will see you guys in the next video.